Hey, it's Ted from Ob Rules. I'm, I'm with Peter from his mom. NGC 40K, not just his mom, but he's. you also came out of your mom. I did. Or, I did, did you? On a cold, dark night. <laughs> <laughs> on a dark and stormy night. Yes. <laughs> behind a dumpster. No, 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 no. There's a story I always make fun of my mom, and I tell her a story because everybody's from the, you know, everybody knows that I'm from the mailman. Oh, okay. So my, my favorite story is, you know, that my, drop, my dad was drunk and my mother didn't know any better. Oh. So I'll say it. He's like, it was a cold, dark night. My yeah. dad was drunk and my mother didn't know anybody. <laughs> and there he was, pushing his pelvis. And wow. And, a, and then my mom will listen to this. She actually heard you say this. Oh, yeah, I'll tell it right to her. Oh, really? Yep. And then the mailman walked in. What? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> okay, so you made that part up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's all about storytelling. Like yeah. yeah. So we went to Adepticon today. We were at Adepticon. Like, the whole thing was in one day. It was real short. It was just for us. Like, yes. they, all for us. Yeah, it was the express version. Yes. Of Adepticon. Of Adepticon. So basically, it was just a Forge World line. And then that was it. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> sat in the Forge World line all day. And then I had to pee. Yeah. And then I had to get back in the line again. Uh -huh. And they don't let you, you know, do buttsies. And oh. <laughs> no, no handsies on the buttsies. Oh. Uh, that was intense. Did you see the Forge World line That this was morning? long. It yeah, was incredibly long. It was it was really slow moving, but I think that's like every time we come to Adepticon or even LVO a few weeks ago, like the Forge World line. At first, the first day is like the first day, yeah, and then it like slows down. But it's it's I don't know. It was fun. It's, yeah, it's la to do la it. last year when I was here, mm -hmm. we could walk right up to the Forge World and oh, yeah. and get stuff. Oh okay. Did you go to like the first day, the first like when they first opened? Today or last year? Uh, last year. No. Oh okay. All right. Yeah, cause I, oh, I'll see. Yeah, we did come in like a little bit, not really early today. I think we came in like a little afternoon, right? Yeah. Around then. Around okay. Because we had we saw the uh, was it the War Machine Hordes people, the Privateer Press, like they had a decent sized line. Yeah. Um, that was bananas. And then the <laughs> Reaper I, and then Bone, Bones. Reaper. Bone was up right Uh Reaper, Reaper Bones, mm -hmm. Miniatures. There seemed to be a, like quite a bit of people there. Oh, okay. So. Cool. Yeah, so the vendor hall was a lot bigger than it was last year. It was ginormous, wasn't yes. it? Yes. I think I think it was probably like an extra thirty percent bigger, maybe no, fifty percent bigger almost. Cause I, think I, I go like with thirty-two extra... and a half. Yeah. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I counted tiles. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I guess they had, didn't have as much in the main lobby area because normally I think like they had a um, power yeah. play gaming and like. Uh, uh, Mechanical Warhorse and stuff like that were out in the main lobby, and this time they didn't. So they right. they probably pushed, and those guys weren't here this year, but they pushed, like who would have been, you know. Things might change tomorrow though. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't I don't know I don't know if they do any shifting around tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, uh, there's all a bunch of those events and things yeah. like that, or the trading, bits trading doesn't start till tomorrow. Oh, so okay. I don't know if there's any extra things they bring out mm -hmm. that only is Friday Saturday or Friday oh. Saturday Sunday. I don't so this was also a little bit nif uh, different because I think they added like an extra day or an extra half day because I think it started on Thursday last year. It was Thursday, yeah. I think and Thursday. it started Wednesday this year. Yeah, and I wish I would have came down now. Yeah, you really should have. I got I to really see like should've. all the stuff. Yeah. All the stuff. And you, and chances are you've probably already seen it on Bowls and everywhere else. But You got to meet Duncan. You yeah. got to meet... Dude, Duncan was super cool. I think I'm going to have to find him and I knew, we'll I kidnap need, him. Yeah, I need two thin pictures. No, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. But just double exposure. Uh, yes, yeah, double exposure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Duncan was really cool. We also, you and I got to, um, we had a seminar with Andy Smiley. Yeah, that was pretty um, cool. And he did the, um, he, he did the emceeing, him and Pete Foley. Um, for the preview last night, which we got to see like all the stuff coming down the pipe, which you've seen since you're on the internet. Um, but Andy was super, this, we actually got to sit down with him and talk about uh, writing for Black Library. Yes. And that was badass. Like It, it was, was pretty badass. I don't think there was a whole lot of like insider secrets so much as like general like, all right, if you're a writer, this is what you should know. You should know how to write. So I think like it was kind of like a really cool like pep talk about how to do it, would you say? Or did you feel that there was like some insider baseball that... Yeah, well, I mean, it's. I think it's stuff that they already told you. There, obviously, there's a perspective from the writer's side of it. Of mm -hmm. here's techniques I use. Here's techniques to improve your writing. Things like that, which I think are great. And they're they're always good to, you know, to hear over and over again, even if you've heard some of them a few times before. Yeah. Um, just as just as a reminder to yourself that hey, these are some practices you could be doing. But you know, but then I do think there was some some insider stuff, kind of of how they, he was saying. Hey, if you're wanting to write for Black Library, you need you need you're writing in their canon, yeah. And 
that's what you need to focus on. So if you're going to write AOS, focus on that and mm -hmm. don't try to say that you're going to write you know, a new realm or anything like that of... Because they aren't going to do that. It's only those really experienced yeah. writers that are going to they're going to take that risk on. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like like we were talking earlier, I had some great story ideas, but again, they're kind of maybe on the fringe of you know if I ever got accepted as some kind of writer that they would maybe let someone do a long time from now or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but if you're just coming in, they aren't going to say like, oh, something that's going to turn the tide of the galaxy. Yeah. yeah they aren't going to let you touch it. That that. Was, I think like that was yeah. kind of, and, and I don't know if this is more like insider baseball or it's more pep talkish, but I think one of the cool things that he did point out, and I think, and, and, the, and the, fact, <laughs> the fact that he did point this out tells me that a lot of people are kind of... That's what's on tap his, tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's his thing. He does that. Yeah. <laughs> But one of the, I think the interesting things that you really kind of pointed out was, and this is, I'm going to paraphrase, but um, basically when it comes down to it, when you're writing for GW, it's a job versus like, you're not an artist, you're uh, you're an artisan, or he, I guess he said it's more of a craft than an art. So basically right. when it comes down to it, like you, you're not going to be rewriting the system. You're not going to be writing that, like that thing that just like changes canon, changes the world. You're not going to reinvent the wheel. It's like can you do your job, which is to write wonderful stories about space marines, um, right. because that's predominantly what they write about, because that's what people want. Right. Um, and so, you know, if you're going to try and come up with that thing, I think, like, one point guy pointed out that you know, he sees a lot of stories about explaining what the hive mind is in, like, a thousand words, you know, it's, you're not going to do that. <laughs> like, so, that was pretty cool. I thought that was... Yeah, and they certainly aren't going to hand that over to, a, or to like you said, they... He said they aren't, they aren't going to take that risk on a brand new author tackling a subject like that. That's risky. That's that risky is, yeah. already, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that was pretty, it was a good, it was a good, definitely a great seminar. Uh -huh. um, he was hilarious as shit. Yes, yeah, like, so he was very funny. Yeah. And if they host one of these again next year, I'll, I'll take it. Uh -huh. I'll take it again, just even if it's, even if it's him again, just because I'm sure there's, began to be told similar things again to refresh yourself of what you should be doing and uh -huh. then plus if they you know the more times you meet these guys that kind of thing and, yeah. or if they change it up I'm sure a different author would have different things to say of techniques and stuff like that yeah so then we also um, you took uh, a pigment class for Mr. Justin no that's tomorrow no oh that's right you were both I taking it you took the color the class. light and color composition okay and that was an excellent course mm -hmm. um from just secret weapon miniatures yeah. of kind of you know how to, where to place your model on your on your base, how to create those scenes, things like getting your focus of um, what you want to focus with, like creating your triangles, creating your putting things in the background. There's a lot of stuff involving like uh, looking at um, film stills and uh, like uh, paintings and photos and of what makes a good one versus another one from the art side of things and what to look for and how to set up things like dioramas or painting figs or like I was saying to you of I would have never thought before of of uh, if you're gonna have a, a light shade having a dark shade underneath it so everything needs to be constantly um, dark and light dark and light dark and light mm -hmm. or even if you do the knuckles and decide oh I'm gonna put this light shade on their fingers you need to have a darker shade than what your normal shade is right underneath those knuckles oh, yeah. or else why is this knuckle up here popping or you know again that whole yeah. light side of things of why would there be light coming up from this area where yeah. the light is coming down unless you're trying to bring that focus to a different point on the model and it was just tips and tricks yeah, of, I think like th you know, that kind of reminds me because I, I took a class too it was like this micro texturing uh, cloth um, it pretty uh, cool. from Kielik I think is his name I can't remember his last name He's, he was from Russia and by the way if you haven't taken any painting classes um, from Adeptic uh, at Adepticon I seriously recommend it they bring the top of the top I mean I was sitting next to a five time Slayer Sword member or a sword winner um, a Todd Swanson I think his name was and then on my other side um, I had another uh, Golden Demon award winner I mean these were big dogs like it was and I was right there just Ted asking Cade like <laughs> paintings and models of them but anyway um, 
one of the things that they had us doing, you know, when we're doing like a painting uh, class was like, he asked us at one point, like, all right, find like a subject matter, like find a texture that you want to replicate. And so we were looking for like a visual um, aid, basically. So it was kind of like the same ideas. Like, and I think I, I know as a, as a um, figure painter, I often forget to do that. As a graphic designer, I often look for things to um, to help me kind of replicate. But as a painter, I often do forget that, like, all right, maybe I should go and find what does rust look like? What is what happens in that oxidization process? Like, how can I get this more accurate? Because like we have an idea in our head what rust might look like, but it's not necessarily, you know, it's a characterization versus like the reality of it. So, right. So that's kind of cool. Like that, it seems like that's a consistent between the classes. Yeah. And, yeah. Tomorrow, I look forward to the different classes for that. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk that up tomorrow. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. um, and then you played in Titanicus? Yes, and I pissed people off. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no I heard I, a lot about that today. Yeah, because we had the... It was pretty cool. So we were playing right. Eldar. The Eldar side didn't have as many players, yeah. so I volunteered to be one of the Eldar players, the filthy, uh -huh. filthy Xenos. Uh -huh. um, but I'm going to put that in with my entire Eldar army. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, add a titan to my entire yeah. <laughs> Why not? Be, why not? Right? <laughs> my, my whole five wraith, wraith guard and, and one <laughs> fire storm. But oh. they, uh, so they were coming, the, the chaos were coming, or not chaos, Imperial was coming in and they had these close combat guys. They trapped one of the phantom titans. Mm -hmm. They'd already blown my, my phantom titan up. But one of the things that they allow you to do is to come back on the board again following turn. Oh, okay. So then when I came back on, I was busy trying to take all the... I was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with their warlord, but uh, our side kind of blew that up first. And then and it was well, roughly tied, that kind of thing. And then uh, it was kind of, bro, help me out. Bro, dude, bro. <laughs> and, he, and here, one of the phantoms was buried in between three different titans. Uh -huh. And they were all just like punching and kicking him oh and so i just turned and shot one of them and exploded him. Oh. <laughs> and that was the end of the and that art. was the end of the game <laughs> that's awesome and their two close combat guys didn't kill the one but it was great because they were doing so much damage to him that yeah. every single slot he had was all the way to where it would like he didn't have any arms left oh wow but it was like in his his head was almost to where it was uh catastrophic oh. you know so it had major damage. same with the legs like one more damage in any other area yeah. would have put him out <laughs> and me blowing up that one titan that uh -huh. was in the trio that was trying to to get him yeah is what prevented him from having that happen oh, so okay. then the eldar ended up winning cool yeah so I, <laughs> so it was fun. I don't know these types Titanicus of games. is a blast. It's Titanicus a lot is fun. hella fun. Um, and I think that, yeah, it was uh, uh, was it Dave and Matt who usually run it. They're gonna let us run it um, tomorrow, tomorrow, Friday. Yep. Um, and uh, but yeah, I think it was was it Dave that was like, God damn it, Peter. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you should. Why'd you have to win that one? Yeah. Why'd you screw that up? <laughs> so I think like they were in the lead. And they were gonna win by like th uh, th eight, uh, six. Three points. They're gonna win by three points or something like that. It was gonna be and really close. You flipped it around to where you guys won by three points. So there was like a six point shift. Yes. Oh yeah. So yeah. he was he was living. Of course he was dirty a little Eldar. Plastered. Dirty Eldar. <laughs> it's yeah, all that sake they were tough. drinking. The, the Eldar are tough and like the Titanicus, <laughs> but they are. Yeah, they so are. I'm curious. So I started asking them like you know with the new Titanicus coming out, um, like what are they gonna do with the rules? And they were saying like well we're just gonna adopt it and move it in because we understand that like Eldar have an issue, but. You know, whatever it's a game, so right. Okay. <laughs> and you're not yeah. there necessarily to like, you know, win or be competitive, but to have fun. So it's just like nature of the beast. Yeah, uh, I can't it's imagine they make a lot of tweaks to it. Yeah, you know. But they were saying like I think a lot of the weapons that they originally use like they don't have anymore, or the other way around, right? I think like pulsar cannons were not a thing back in the day. And right, in the original ones, they they were pretty limited on weapons. Now yeah. they have a lot more weapons than uh -huh. they did before. So they had to make some tweaks to modernize it. Right, so, like the new Adeptus Titanicus, like that'll be, and it, it'll be just as fun because it's still gonna be ginormous titans versus little guys. <laughs> yeah. So. And you're gonna be running around in your socks, pushing these <laughs> big things around. So. Yeah, I've been t I've been talking yeah. with them all like possibly since knights used to be part of the game too, mm -hmm. uh, of possibly bringing knights in, but like limiting the number because obviously you don't want you know the whole point is to bring have that be the big guys, and, yeah, and rather than having like a flood of like dozens oh, of knights. Right. But I thought it would be kind of neat to have you know like okay put the cap on four or something like mm -hmm. that and. Because the rules for knights before were really simple. They were just a small thing with their little close combat weapon, but then they have like that one smaller 
uh, strength lance or cannon. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they, they were part of the game before. So yeah, I don't see why I couldn't do it, especially with now they yeah. have the cool models. Now. I think like the way they they made the rules, like I mean, they tweaked it slightly, but I think it's like for the most part, it's Titanicus, the old Titanicus, but it's just like they increased the ranges and and changed it slightly. So I think that, I mean, because you get the what was it second book that came out, the uh, College of Titanicus or. Yeah. I forgot what it was. Um, but anyway, so we could adapt that over. But the, you know, the new one's going to be out soon, so right. we're going to redo it anyway. And it's going to be redone so, anyway, so yeah. yeah, who knows what's all going to yeah. be in there. So it's going to be exciting. So anyway, I'm excited about tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I think I only have like one class, and then I have Titanicus, so it's going to be a lot of running around at the Fortune table. <laughs> yeah, I have, two, I have two classes, and then I have that, yeah. the, the Titanicus to run. So. Oh, wow. I'm gonna have to make sure we like load up on our terrain and everything yeah. that we bring all that stuff with us. Uh huh. Um, if you get a chance, uh, say hello to Peter when you're uh, on the floor. So if you're in Illinois, uh, definitely stop by and say hello to him. Um, I have some stickers. Go ahead and ask for stickers. I also have some patches. I'll sell them for five bucks, but don't tell anybody because I don't know if I can actually sell anything there. Um, I got shirts if you listen so to our show. Yeah. You know oh, that's right. That's right. I got, <laughs> I got shirts made up. Just you owe me a shirt. I owe you a shirt. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I better pull those out before like yeah, accidentally before you sell my shirt. Yeah. Sell them all off. <laughs> I'm excited about that. I think it's really cool. So anyway, we'll see you on the floor. Bye. See you on the floor. <laughs>